One advice I usually give to men at every age, but also to women lately, is that when they do not know what to read in the Bible, when they have no inspiration, and they start to ask themselves, what part of the Bible should I read today? That they should read Proverbs, chapters 5, 6, and 7. I'll explain why. Because these three chapters of the book of Proverbs have advice. The book of Proverbs is filled with advice, but these three specific chapters have a set of advice in regards to the adulteresses, the danger of adultery, the danger of falling for a fiery passion, truly fiery, because you will burn those involved. I won't read the three chapters, but you're invited to do so later with time, because you don't need to read the three chapters all at once, and gradually pay attention to the theme in these chapters. Starting on chapter 5, it says, My son, in other words, an advice from a father to a son, and we can also understand as God speaking to his children, pay attention to my wisdom, lend your ear to my understanding, that you may preserve discretion, and your lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of any moral woman drip honey, and her mouth is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as warm wood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps lay hold of hell. And then it goes on. You can already get an idea of what this text speaks about. The immoral woman. Solomon was inevitably talking about what happened to his father and mother, King David and Bathsheba, back in those days. Because it was precisely there that the kingdom of Israel started its ruin. Look at the power of destruction of a family, of a marriage. A marriage puts an entire nation on a collision course. And, to this day, it has not recovered. Israel has never been the same since this adultery of King David. Solomon, who was a fruit of this relationship, no longer a fruit of the adultery, the fruit of the adultery died, the first child died, later both got married, and Solomon was born. And he knew the story. Who didn't know about this story of David and Bathsheba in Israel? So Solomon drew lessons of what he felt in his own skin, of the consequences of this. And through these three chapters of Proverbs, he warns us of the danger and how sin starts. It starts with the seduction. Sin is seducive, as most sins start seducing the sinner, those who are unaware. If sin was not so seducive, no one would desire it. But it begins with the seduction of our senses, our eyes, ears, the touch. Am I right? 
we are seduced often, in the case of passion, by the imagination. How would it be? How would it be? Often, a woman who is in a relationship whose husband gives her no attention, focuses fully at his job, and treats the woman, you know, like someone who is just there, to attend to his needs whenever he needs. He does not care about his wife's needs. Then the wife is tempted to look at other men, to look at the neighbor's garden, and starts to dream, to imagine. I met people who fell in love with others through social media. They fell in love with artists, singers, actors, football players. They gave vent to their imagination that they fell in love for someone who they did not even know. Such is the hole that is in the person's heart because of the lack of attention, care, love that she desired in her marriage from her husband. Then they start to play with her emotions. Imagination goes far. And you know, when we bring something to our head, is the first stage to fall in sin. You start to conceive sin in your head. Remember that King David, before falling, he looked at Bathsheba. He saw from his balcony. He was looking from the rooftop. Bathsheba bathing. He looked at her, desired her, and at the right time, he gave vent to that feeling that was in his head and inside of him. How many men do likewise? Men, both men and women betray. Make no mistake of this. When I hear someone saying, men betrays more than women. Mathematically speaking, this is impossible. It's impossible. Because if men is betraying, is betraying with women. Of course, at times, men betrays with men too, women with women. But statistically, if men is betraying, is with another woman. So women is also betraying. So she will get involved with a married man. So let's not overlook any of the sides. Betrayal is in the human being. This desire for an adventure is in the human being. Nobody can deny this. It's in us. Whether you married, single, well married, badly married, is in us. Because sin runs through our veins. Going back to men. Men usually tend to get involved with this because of the visual attraction. Isn't this game the women play with men? They dress in a seducive way because they know what attract the male eyes and men pay with their own eyes attention to the women. More easily, men fall because they are tempted by their eyes, the appearance. That's why in the same chapter 5, King Solomon also says, Drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. Speaking about the wife. Should your fountains be dispersed abroad streams of water in the streets? In other words, just as water was very precious back in those days, as it is today. But today we turn the tap and water runs through it. But back in the days they had to dig wells. Nobody wasted it. Until today in the Middle East, in Israel, they don't waste water. So when he says, should your fountains be dispersed abroad, streams of water in the streets? Meaning, you should not waste your wife's love. 
You should not waste the opportunity of having intimacy in your marriage. And he goes on. Let them be only your own and not for strangers with you. Let your fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of your youth as a loving deer and a graceful doe. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times and always be enraptured with her love. For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? It's quite graphic with his language because he knows that men are visual. He's speaking about it. So be careful with your eyes. In the case of men, be careful with your eyes. Later, he says that men should not even go by the doors of this seductress, not even pass by this seductress, that he may not enter into temptation. Because those who don't enter into temptation, they don't fall into temptation. So don't enter and avoid evil. It is a warning for men, but for women too. Maybe... It takes a little longer for women, but it can also happen. The involvement of a woman with the immoral man might take a little longer, but she must be careful with her feelings, her imagination, her emotional involvement that can be excited by the absence of affection and care in the marriage. In other words, men and women should take care of each other. You should supply the physical and emotional needs to not leave any gap for evil and sin in them. I repeat this advice. Every time you men, you woman, what will I read in the Bible? Read Proverbs 5, 6 and 7. Meditate on these words. Time to time, Go back to them. It's never too much to remember how sin works to harass us and how bitter is it is end. As long as there's time for you to wake up, pay attention to the word of God because he warns us that later you may not say, I didn't know. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.